welcome to DCC Productions, live from Factory Girl here in the Danforth. I'm the Moose, and tonight we're talking to Anna from Beams. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> um, some of the audience that we're talking to obviously won't know Beams from that point of view. We've got a linkage into the UK and this sort of thing. So, from, from how would you describe? Because I could describe them and get, it, get you get you dreadfully wrong. But how would you describe Beams as music from that point? Of view? Hmm. Well, I feel like I could do that and be dreadfully wrong as well. <laughs> um, we mostly identify as a vein of folk rock, more kind of on the psychedelic side, like less straightforward structures and stuff like that, but still quite accessible. Um, usually described as sort of a big lush sound. Right, okay. Vocal harmonies at the forefront. But there's, uh, well, we, obviously we saw you very recently, so yeah, for those who don't, haven't heard you guys or seen you guys, and there will be some links that they can see you through, I mean, banjo, electric mandolin, um, saw. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are, they're, they're, they're some, some really interesting elements for, for your sound that, that, that makes, it, makes, it, makes you unique, I think, for, from that point of view. And, and that's, I know that there's an energy, if I'm honest, around you guys, um, certainly. When we saw you recently, the energy from everybody was phenomenal. I don't, I haven't seen that many that many people dance around the stage while playing for forever. So it, um, it was really, really very powerful. And that sort of takes us back a little bit because we saw you first of all in the Horseshoe, I think, support, supporting Cuff the Duke. Okay, yeah. So that was that, a nice show. It was a nice show. It was a nice show. But obviously, then that brings us brings us back again. And then, of course, now you're headlining the Horseshoe, headlining in the very venue. And that's not the first time you've done that, of course. Mm -hmm. So how was how was the how was the show that last show for you? It was really nice. I feel like the more that we tour, the tighter we get, and the more we trust each other on stage. And I'm sort of learning how to command the stage without being able to really leave the microphone or move my arms. So the better I get at that, the more confident I feel. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. But you, I think you just touched on a point. You say you know you trust one another, but you've been the you haven't turned people like over and through your band, have you? You know you've kept the same the same the same people. You're yeah. you're, the, you're the same people that you with with Heather and Keith and and the others. That but you you know you, you've retained that consistency across all the members of your band. So that's going to give you, I suppose, that that is that something that works. That, that that's got to be something that helps for you, helps you. I think, isn't it? I would imagine so. Uh, I'm not sure, but we all go back a far ways, but before the band even started, so uh, it seems just kind of like we're glued together at this point. I don't know any different, really. No, 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 and that's, and that's fine. I mean, a lot of what we've seen a lot of bands do is turn over people, you know, guitarists and drummers and singers. You know, we've seen them, we've seen them move through. You know, and it's, it brings a slightly different. You know, I think that you know, continually looking for something better, something deeper. But mm -hmm. what, what you're doing, you're building, you're building from the, from the band itself. As, mm -hmm. as you say, the more trust you build, the you know, the songwriting piece. So how does how does a songwriting piece work with so many, with so many people in the um, in the band? Who's Who's your principal songwriter? Is it you or is it? It is. Yeah. Okay. And it is difficult. There are a lot of us and it requires a lot of paring down and editing. But the way we've found it works best is if I bring the songs to the bass player and drum player. Right. And then we kind of craft it as the three of us. And then we add the vocal harmonies on. And then the other instruments know where to sit harmonically. Okay. Am I right in thinking as well that you write you write songs with the banjo? Yeah, right. sometimes with the guitar, but mostly with the banjo. Mostly with the banjo, yeah. Because again, again, from from a from an interest point of view, I'd see most people write through guitar or you know or with someone else playing a guitar and they and they work songs through. But if you're writing with, writing with a banjo, is that, that that's your that's the that's the instrument you choose naturally, is it? I chose it after I had sort of felt like I exhausted writing on guitar. I wrote on guitar for my first, right. like, I don't know, five or six years of writing. And then I liked the way that banjo limited me because I didn't really know how to play. Okay. So it helped me get back to, like, song basics rather than trying to be fancy. Right, okay. And, and in terms of songwriting, new material. You know, you spend, there was a lot of new material I think you played the other night and you've been recording as well. Can you just talk, give us a little bit around what that, what that looks like for forthcoming releases, that sort of thing? Sure. Um, our new album is all done. So it's 10, 
or 11 songs. I can't quite remember. We have a few that we're not sure if they're going to be on it or not. Um, but right now we're just shopping it around. We're not quite sure when we're going to release it yet. Is that giving you, to so the, the gig in the horseshoe then, does that give you an opportunity to see how well those songs play with the audience as well at the same time? Is, does, that, does that come into it or is it more about whether, you, as I say, if you've got 11 songs and you, you want to pare that down, um, how, how, how does, what, what are the, what's the key pieces for that in terms of this one doesn't make it and this one does? Mm. <laughs> Um, for us, it's whether it can fit on a vinyl. We like to make the album flow so that it would work well on vinyl if we get to print it. Oh, okay. okay. And then beyond that, it's like, would we like to do an exclusive seven inch on the side or something like that? Right. So we've right. just got a little bit more material to work with. Okay. Maybe press a couple things. And when, and when do you think? When do you think we'll see that? We'll see the um, the. What's the title of the album? Is uh, it's Go. called Teach Me to Love. Oh, right, okay. okay. Yeah, we'd like to release it this year. Okay. But if we do end up getting picked up by a label, it'll depend on their schedule. Right, so. okay. And is that something you're looking... You're, well, every band's looking to be picked up by, by a label, but that's... The yeah. I think we think there's strength in numbers. Like, being able to be on the bill with other bands that you kind of fit with is a really big thing. We know there's not a whole lot of money in the industry anymore, but... No, it's it's a difficult one to make to make any money out of certainly. Yeah. Uh, and vinyl gives at least you know uh, a, presumably a better return. It's probably more expensive to press, but mm -hmm. then you know um, streaming and streaming is um, uh, fairly difficult to draw money from. I'd imagine from from that point of view, mm -hmm. unless you're unless you're actually selling millions and millions of downloads or having it streamed you know millions of times a day. Um, it's uh, that can, that can be pretty difficult. I think that in terms of getting that out to the audience, you, obviously you played the horseshoe with uh, King Cuddy mm -hmm. as well, and uh, the Barons, uh, and, and Chris Colgan. I was really impressed with the whole bill. Was it mm -hmm. you? Was it you that picked them at the end of the day? It was actually how, how King Cuddy that picked uh, everyone. I think I yeah. picked Chris Colgan because we're friends, right? And we've played together many times. Okay, but yeah, it was a group effort. But it was it was a strong bill. That's mm -hmm. and that's something that came across. I think. You know, and, and there's a, you know there is taking a chance with that too. You know, sometimes because uh, they're, they're all, all good strong sets from good bands mean that you know that you you've also got to get on stage and be at your best as well at the same time. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm never right. really concerned. We're doing something different. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! I, absolutely, there was only there was only you know it was it was clear you know from from our point of view um, who who came across as the sort of Unfortunate to call it the best band of the night, but, it, but it, that's the way it came across, and that was easy to you guys. So, hmm. um, and it was, it was, and I think mostly because of the movement, you know, that everyone but everyone was into what you were doing. It's it's very very unusual to see everyone just so into it. it was, on stage. On stage, yeah, yeah. Seriously, it really came across. I was I was um, I wasn't surprised by any means because we've seen you guys before, but. I think it was a, you know, as you say, you're comfortable in your own skin. You trust one another, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a, there was a lot of fun to be had there as well. So yes. that's 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 the main thing. In terms of taking, in terms of taking us off to somewhere else, though, I noticed on your on your gig gig shows that you've got like shows lined up in Cincinnati and then and then Austin. Is that right? Yeah, we're trying to fill in that tour. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're, you just want to fill in the gaps for, from that point of view. Is the Austin, is that, is that the um, South by Southwest shows? No, we haven't done that before. No? Um, we're just playing with this band called Moving Panoramas mm. that we played with at the Horse, no, Silver Dollar right. last year. Nice. So, yeah, they are putting a show together for us. Oh, very nice. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And it takes you to new places, of course, as well, you know, from, from that point of view, which gives you a new audience and um, I just build you across the board, so that's tremendous. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask, so we've got a little bit of randomness here now as we go. So if you've got, we, we asked this question a slightly different way previously, but if you had the chance to be in a car and, across, and drive across Canada with anybody, hmm. dead or alive, who would you who would you pick to have as your as your car buddy to drive across Canada with, just to be able to pick their brain from from that point of view in in some cases? Did anyone come to mind? Oh, I probably want to be with someone funny. I know there was someone I met recently. Oh, I couldn't really stop laughing around, but. Off the bat, um, maybe Tanya Tagak. 
Yeah. I can't think of the other person. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's 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 that opportunity just to spare you know spend some time with people and, you know, and being on the road has its um, has that sort of connectability. That's not really a right word, is it at all? Uh, but it, there is that opportunity, I suppose, yeah. to really build that build that build that relationship. So yeah, across Canada is is good. Yeah, I think trying yeah. to take that would be interesting yeah. to hang out with. Yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And camp with. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be really interesting, actually. Yeah. Neat, like fireside song time and stuff like that. Oh, can you imagine that? That'd be really out awesome. in the middle of nowhere. That That'd would be cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Oh god, yeah, that would be absolutely astonishing, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's. No, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, think about that all evening now. Um, yeah, maybe she could teach me how to throat sing. That would be. That would be good. Yeah. We we followed a, a group called. Um, Oh god, I'm going to forget the name of them now. Uh, oh, it's a lap group from inside the Arctic Circle, and um, they did something very similar. So we, with the with the throat singing, so we actually saw I see you know comparisons between what well, ten years ago does and what the um, the group with Gula Gula was their album, and they, they were very very similar from that point of view, but but, but not but miles apart. Yeah, she's taken hers in a very different yeah. route. Yeah, 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 and no, I love that. I absolutely love that. Okay, thank you. What we'll do is we'll go through, hopefully, uh, well, we will go through the speed round of Doom, okay? okay? Which is nothing to worry about. It's just the first answer that comes to mind. Oh, man. And if not, then we can pass it. And you think that's a terrible question, we can just pass it and move on, okay? okay? So you do have the option just to go pass and move when we're done. If you, were, if you had, to, had a pizza, which pizza would best describe your personality? Mm, maybe uh, duck and pear. Duck and pear. Yeah, kind of greasy but sweet. Oh, okay, cool. That's, that's that's all good. That's all good. Um, we've had to change a lot of the questions, as I said, um, back to last year. So it, there's now program to Mars, a one-way rocket trip to Mars. And um, if you had to choose which one of the following musical celebrities would have to be on that or could be on that flight, mm -hmm. yeah. So we're not saying that they died as we did last year oh, okay. and got into trouble, okay? They're just on a one-way trip to Mars. Okay. Uh, so we've got Van Morrison, Johnny Rotten, Kanye West, Bob Dylan, or Sting. Mm. Oh no, they're all kind of, probably Sting, sorry. Probably Sting. Yeah, Okay. Well, he you might be... like it there. Do you know what he might? Lots of mournful songs, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. A nice empty space to sing them in. Yeah. That works. That works. Um, if you had to choose one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses, <laughs> which, where would you go with that? <laughs> the duck-sized horses, obviously. Yeah, duck-sized horses. Okay, duck-sized horses it is. Um, hamsters or tarantulas? Oh, I've heard that tarantulas don't bite, so I'll go with tarantulas. You go with tarantulas? Tarantulas yeah. is good. It's good. And um, we had, should Canada, given the fact that there are lots and lots of Canada geese in the country and beyond, it has to be said, should they be an option? Should Canada goose nuggets be an op option at McDonald's? Yeah, I've always thought about what they would taste like. Yeah. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. There were once many passenger pigeons as well, so there have to be some restrictions. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. But I, yeah. So we we we'd have the we'd have two types of nuggets then. We'd have chicken nuggets and Canada goose nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. That works. I just got the little you know the little red flag on. I think that works. Yeah. yeah. It's already trademark. And then what vegetable? If you had to pick a vegetable to describe Toronto, what vegetable would best describe Toronto? Mm. That's a difficult one. Maybe broccoli. Broccoli? Yeah. Okay. Because it's one central structure with many small parts on it. Oh, I like it. I like your thinking. And there's a lot of trees in Toronto. And ravines. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you might not think that you like the stem of broccoli, but actually it can be quite tasty. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's, 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 there are no wrong answers in any of this. It's, 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 it's no, actually a paw paw. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there's no wrong answers in any of this. Okay. 
Well, what we'll do then, um, first, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we want to thank everyone for um, their help, obviously, firstly to Anna for coming here and willing to you're welcome. We have to be uh, in front of us. Um, what we'll find uh, is always the details of the Beams um, links are, will be in the credits coming out, thanks to Factory Girl and um, George here. Our full details of Factory Girl will also be in the credits. Uh, many thanks, obviously, to Angelo and Yestin for filming. Subscribe to our YouTube link. Details of the DCC site will also be as the credits go through. Until next time, thank you.